Hey everybody, Bruce John Dickinson here from Waterbear. This YouTube channel is designed to help you grow your music career to get from A to B. So like and subscribe if you want to be kept in the loop. So this video is about the subject of stress and anxiety and how that can really affect musicians. And we all know that a little bit of stress can be quite helpful before a gig, for example. But when it gets out of hand and it builds up, it can become problematic. So if this is you, have a listen to the video because we're going to be looking at all the things you can do to feel better in the short term and a lot better in the long term. Having spent a lot of time with musicians and creatives, I think it's probably fair to say that creative people are more prone to stress, anxiety, and possibly that even leading to depression. Um, and this might be a result of a, of a couple of factors. One is people that are creative tend to be sensitive personality types, and that's why they're good at writing songs and playing music, because they've got something in here um, that they're trying to get out. And they also, people who are good tend to be driven by an inner voice, a little bit of a monologue that says, you've got to get better, um, you've got to get your standards up, you're not good enough, uh, what will people think of you, who gives you the right to be a musician, you've got to prove yourself. And that's great, but the trouble is, when you do get good, the voice doesn't stop. And the better people get, often the, the harsher that critic becomes, you know. And also, you put those factors in with a creative career, which is often self-employed, and you've got this roller coaster ride, so there's lots of things to actually get anxious about. You put it all together and you've got a perfect storm and a recipe for anxiety, stress, to get really out of hand. So what can we do about it? If we want to understand stress and anxiety, it's helpful to look back at our evolutionary history. Uh, and at a point, I think it's about 1.7 million years ago, two things happened. Uh, human beings started to make more sophisticated tools and that required a little bit of teamwork and use of language and language first started to develop. And this was a real winner in evolutionary terms because people could get together and talk and plan and that, in, in, that necessitated you imagining the future. So to hunt that mammoth, you had to plan somehow a teamwork exercise and push the thing off the cliff. Then the whole tribe does really well and eats the mammoth, you know. And this was hardwired evolutionary because it was a very good survival tactic. The other thing that happened at the same time is that people do plan for difficult situations. What happens if that mammoth turns around and charges us down with its tusks? What do we do then? Those people were particularly good survivors. And the ones who were too gung-ho kind of got gored by the mammoth, you know. So we've actually bred into ourselves a propensity to worry. So that's in almost in our DNA. Number one, my suggestion is that you treat yourself with the same level of compassion that you would a friend. If a friend was feeling a bit low, um, you wouldn't say to them, pull yourself together, you're worthless and weak. You know, but that's, the, that's so often what we're telling ourselves. So just simply, just set a rule that you're going to be as kind to yourself as you would to the people around you that you care about. Tip number two, and this is the most important one of all, you've got to be able to talk about this stuff. And your brain is like a pressure cooker. And if it cooks away, and it's boiling away, and you don't open that valve, it could go pop. So talk about it with your friends. I make a habit of doing that all the time, and I think that's a really healthy thing. But if you feel you can't, find a professional person, maybe a life coach or a business coach, just so long as you've got somewhere to offload, that's a healthy thing. Tip number three is quite a personal one to me because uh, about 10, 12 years ago, I made a transition from being quite anxious to very anxious to not sleeping to having a week of total dysfunction where I just couldn't, couldn't get it together. So very unpleasant feeling probably lapsing into the borders of a proper depression, you know. So the way I coped with it, I, I, I did some research and tried to figure out what was going on in the brain. And this, this is a recent book that covers this subject really well. And that's Ruby Wax's book called Frazzled. And why it's particularly helpful, it explains exactly what's going on in the anxious brain. And people like me, and perhaps you, um, if we've got a propensity to be anxious, you can actually ramp up your nervous system. So suddenly the phone rings and you react as if it's that mammoth coming to kill you. And actually, it might be my wife ringing and say, what, what time are you coming home for tea? Put the phone down, the heart's going, you've got the fight or flight response, and you've got a lot of chemicals flooding your system. And to understand exactly which bit of the brain is doing that, I won't, I won't go into it now, but you can, read Frazzled. And then if you understand that, you're nine tenths of the way there to doing something about it and detuning that system and feeling a lot more level. Tip number four, do something practical about this right now and you'll just the act of doing something positive will make you feel a lot better. But I can recommend two books that will really speed this process up. One is The Happiness Trap by Russ Harris and the other one is The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. 
Both of these books are about living in the moment. They both deal with it in a kind of different ways. They're about living in the moment and taking that internal worrying narrative much less seriously. And I, this can make a fundamental difference really quickly. If you're not big on reading, um, both these authors have got loads of great stuff on YouTube, so you can just stick your headphones in and have a listen. Tip number five, live in the present. Because it's interesting that we can always cope with the moment we're in. What we find difficult to cope with is a hundred different futures that we imagine, all of which are probably bad. Um, so we've not got to take that stuff too seriously and learn to be present in the moment that you're in and then you can plan a future because the future is just now a bit later on. So thanks for watching. I think we're going to return to this subject a few times because it's so important. It's definitely time for the music community to take this seriously and us all to start talking about it. I think it's a healthy thing. I'm not a qualified health professional. I'm not some kind of guru, but I have been through this stuff myself. I do feel I've got some understanding of some aspects of it. So thanks for listening. Uh, if any of this stuff, if you've got any comments about it or it's affected you in any way, feel free to get in touch and I will see you on the next post.